Hello everyone, it's me, Coffee Stitcher. It is Sunday afternoon, um, if you can believe that. Um, oh, my camera is... I have my phone plugged in for charging and it's, it's at a different side today. I'm looking... that's odd. Okay, so, um, how is everybody? Um, I'm good. Uh, I want to first take a quick moment and say thank you um, from the bottom of my heart, uh, for all of the wonderful response we've had on Stitch Mania, the talk show. Um, I'm really glad that everybody seemed to like it as well as they did. Um, we had over a thousand subscribers already, which is insane to me. Um, especially considering back when I started FlossTube, it took, like, six months to a year to get even up to, like, 500 subscribers. And we did a thousand in under a week. So thank you to everyone who's watched and subscribed and commented. Um, we have not made our plans yet for when we're going to do our next discussion. I'm sure that'll probably be sometime this week. Um, but we're definitely, definitely appreciative. Um, so yeah. Um, all right. So now we're going to launch into the rest of the video. Um, I want to pull one quick Q&A out from last week that I didn't have an answer for about Quaker samplers. Um, the reason they're named Quaker samplers is they were taught specifically in Quaker style schools um, as one of the, I don't know if it was necessarily what you, we would call now an extracurricular or if it was part of the core text, um, but that's where, where it comes from, is it originates from the Quaker schools. Awkworth um, in particular was one of the more famous ones. Um, I believe Stitchy Box offers a book of Awkworth designs. Um, so if you like Quakers, definitely check out Stitchy Box because I know she's got a good number of them. Um, Tempting Tangles does a lot of really cute uh, Quaker designs. Um, obviously the Ori TM with her Quaker fantasies. Um, so it definitely give those a look. Um, all right, so we're gonna dive on into today's Q and A. Um, the first question comes from, uh, Jennifer Redding. She has two questions about the next Stitching Book Club. Um, her first is, have I decided on floss and fabric? Um, to first clarify for those who aren't aware, the next book is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Took everything in me not to call it Frankenstein. <laughs> um, and this one is not going to have a called for floss and fabric color. Instead, she, it, so it's going to be a monochromatic, um, and she wants us to pick book, er, colors that evoke the book to us. Um, so mine is going to depend a little, once we get the final um, scan count from her, I have an idea, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough, and it was a limited edition thread, so I, I don't want to commit to that until I'm sure. Um, so I don't have an answer just yet, um, but I promise you, as soon as I do, I'll let y'all see. Um, then she also asks, what edition of Frankenstein are you going to read? I just pre-ordered the new illustrated one that comes out at the end of August, which is also the one that I pre-ordered. So we're going to be reading the same version. How awesome are we? Um, all right. Let's see, Heather Henning asks, where do you purchase your fabric? Um, I purchase from a variety of locations. Um, Fortnite fabric is one of my favorites. Um, I sometimes get it from my LNS. Um, I've ordered from Under the Sea Fabrics before. I've ordered from Ships Manor before. I've ordered from Color and Cotton before. Those are the ones I've used the most. Um, so, I hope that helps. Um, I get them from all over the place. Uh, Kansas City Girl in Colorado World wants to know my thoughts on Hamilton. Um, I enjoyed it, sort of. Um, I think it's a better album. Um, but I will also state the performances are great. I think the, the score is good. But Thomas Kale and Andy Blankenbuehler, Bueller, the director and the choreographer, are two of my least favorite creative teams out there. Um, I don't think Kale is a terribly dynamic director. 
Um, and I think Blankenbuehler tends to over choreograph. You don't need your chorus constantly moving. Um, I felt that way after In the Heights, because I saw the original cast about a month after it won the Tony in 2008. I felt that way about his revival of The Wiz that I saw twice in 2009. Um, I felt that way after seeing the choreography, seeing 9 to 5, that was Blankenbuehler's choreography, which again, it was too much. And I felt that way after seeing the world premiere of Fly uh, in Dallas, which, not the Fly, like this horror film, it was a Peter Pan revisionist take. Um, and I felt the same way about that too. So my issues are less with the show itself and more with its creative team. Um, but I did think the performances were fantastic. Anne Masseau asks, have I read the novel Finding Dorothy? Um, I started it. I didn't enjoy it. Um, mostly because Maud Gage Baum was a very interesting and dynamic woman. And there's a fantastic book about her mother and her mother, Matilda Jocelyn, who is like Susan B. Anthony's BFF, um, called Born Criminal by Ange Angelica Carpenter. Terrific book, very terrific book. Um, so I feel like in a lot of ways it's doing Maud a disservice by incorporating her in this way. Um, and I just, I couldn't get into it. Come on, scroll up, scroll up. Ah! Not quite that far. <laughs> Yay, scrolling. Um, Sarah Contento asks, what does it mean when a stitcher says they are using a prim color? Um, a prim color meaning uh, is short for primitive. Um, so it's not bright colors. It's more muted earth tones. Um, colors that were easier to dye in nature. So instead of, like, a bright yellow, it's going to be more of a gold. Um, Jen K asks, what is one story that you wish a designer would use as an inspiration for a new cross-stitch pattern? Always lie in the witch in the wardrobe. There is not enough Narnia out there. Um, that's an easy one. Um... All right, Linda Kleindenst asks, where did you get the seasonal chart from? Um, and she's meaning every season. Um, it is from Tiny Modernist. It's this year's sort of year-long Sal. Um, you'll be seeing it briefly today. Um, so yes, it is still available. It is still in the process of coming out. So we've only got, we've got, we're on part three. Um, part one was the border and the center phrase. Part two was summer or spring. Part three is summer. Um, so we get fall at the start of next month. Then we'll get winter two months later. And then we'll get the final motifs at the end. So we're getting close. We're a little over halfway now. So, um, but God, I'm loving these colors. Ha. Huh. Okay. You'll see that soon though. Um, for those that are excited about my Oz channel, there will, I am finally reading Glinda of Oz. Absolutely loving it. I'm expecting to have a, have that filmed this week sometime. So there will be another Garrett of Oz video coming. Yay! Um, to those who made the comment about any time is is coffee time. Yes, I can drink coffee a lot during the day. Um, right now I'm on soda. Um, but I tend to only do one cup during a day because of my stomach. Um, I really probably shouldn't even do the one cup that I do, but yeah.
Let's see. Um, Lynch Helton, I will send you an email. I meant to do that earlier this week and I forgot. So do forgive me for that. And I think that is all of the Q&A for the day. Um, if I missed you, as always, re-comment, because sometimes YouTube is YouTube. And that is the easiest way to put that. Oh, 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 but oh, hang on, we may have more. July, finally. Um... All right. Oh, and Sylvia W. also asked me about Finding Dorothy by Elizabeth Lutz. So. All right. Moving right along. Um, this week's haul. Let's see. We got um, my nest egg from Three Owl Threads. So it came with my four. Whoop. Four Krynix. Here they are. This is actually a really pretty combination. And then I got my uh, Gentle Arts, of which there's a bunch this time. So here is Dark Chocolate, Fragrant Cloves, and Dried Thyme. Then we've got dungarees, endive, and espresso bean. Forest glade, cranberry, and creek bed. There we go. This would be definitely a primitive color. This one sort of would be. This one definitely would not be. And then Freedom and Faded Roads. Um, so that was, that was nice. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, I like this, this grouping. Um, I need to get my, one of the things I'm doing my, this week on my vacation planning tomorrow is that I'm gonna sit down, I've gotta reorganize my craft closet badly, um, and then I'm gonna try and do some thread organization. But I may also decide to do that at work over a couple of lunches. We'll see, we'll see what's gonna happen. Probably won't do it at work for a couple of lunches. Um, then I got some surprise haul in the mail. Um, so the first thing I got that I'll show you um, and I'll have to show you the needle minder in a little bit. Um, the Lord and Lady of Stitchshire, um, Koi and Sarah, um, made project and tool bags out of this fabric that I thought was super cool and I commented on it and they sent it to me. Um, which I had kind of a, Wednesday was not a great day. Um, got some not great personal news. Um, everything's okay, but it, not unexpected, but still not great. Um, so this definitely helped, um, cause I had kind of a rough day. So here is first the tool bag, which I realized I forgot to put a pair of scissors in, which made my lunch stitching a little interesting, but here's the fabric. Um, it's New York city. You can see it better on the project bag. Um, this is called this piece here. I think they call it a thread pad, but it's a piece of felt and you can lay your thread on it while you're doing it and it stays there which as someone who has problems with wandering thread that uh that's phenomenal and then here's the bag itself um and it has a cute little scissor charm on it so that was a pleasant surprise and then um fellow hufflepuff dawn knew my love of mary inglebright and she sent me this kit which was incredibly appropriate time wise um, it says, walk towards the sunshine and the shadows will fall behind you. Um, it's a Bucilla kit. It's, um, from the year I graduated high school. It's from 2004. Um, 
it came with white Ada, but I don't want to stitch all that pink. So I did start it, um, and you can see the needle minder. So it's a whole matched set. Um, so I'm actually stitching this on Orchid from Fiber on a Whim, um, and there's the start of her umbrella. So I put in a couple of stitches on that so that I would have a new start, um, and then I went back to my rotation. But it definitely, it was, it was something I definitely needed, and while I can say thank you here, they won't ever really know just how much it did truly help that day. Um, so, thank you. Um, all right, so this week for homework, we had to do, we were supposed to write a spell, a protection spell um, and do a thousand stitches on one to two products or we could penalty stitch for 1500. And I admittedly was lazy as hell and did not want to write a spell. So I did 1500 stitches and I came in a little over, I came in at 1600. So the first one I worked on was to finish part three of the secret garden. So here it is. This is from a uh, stitching book club um, on brown sugar from under the sea fabrics. So there's part three. So all that's left are the hinges and the lock. Um, so that won't take too long. I'm gonna probably work on it next weekend. Um, so there's that. And then I also had a finish with um, Literary Alice from Bendy Stitches. This is on a polka dot fabric from Fabric Flare and a general arts conversion all of my own doing. But there it is. So again, I used general arts wool for the hair. For the white rabbit, I actually used a week's dye works cruel wool. Um, because I didn't, the one white I had in General Arts was Roasted Marshmallow, and mine skews to brown. So I went with, with that. So it's a little hard to tell, but he's fuzzy, and he's super cute. I absolutely loved stitching on this. So, finished that Friday. And that fulfilled the homework. And then yesterday, I worked on... Woodland Fairy, and I've got a place I've got a frog. Um, so I thought I had all of the 3740 of the wings done, and then I realized right around in here, I actually accidentally slipped a stitch over a half stitch. So this is all a half stitch over too much. So I've got a frog, all that, which won't take long, but at 11 o'clock last night, I was like, nope, we'll save this for next Saturday. So here's where I'm at on that. So that's Woodland Fairy by Mirabilia, Enchanted Forest Opal from Under the Sea Fabrics. Dress Conversion by me. Wing Conversion, I don't remember her name, but when I eventually find it again, I'll definitely credit her. Um, but yeah. And then today, I'm working on Every Season from Tiny Modernist, and we're going to see just how far I get. That's where I'm at. So I've still got to drop that line down there, um, but working away on it. So we'll see how much I get done today. All right. So that brings us to next week's homework. Um, so the first task is to stitch on a whip that you could compact and make an ornament out of part of. So I'm going to work on Atlantis from Al Forest Embroidery. Um, and this one, it requires, I think, two, how many stitches? Uh, 200 stitches for everything this week. So, um, so here's where I'm at on it. So we'll work on um, some of the small motifs. Okay, 
then the next one is to work on something that you would not want to bring home. So I got a little creative on this one. I'm gonna work on Adventure Awaits from Caterpillar. Oh. There we go. Um, because I'm starting on Europe. And I said that because uh, I would not wanna bring the Eiffel Tower home because that would be a real pain to try and ship. Um, so here's, um, here's where I'm at on it. This is on mummy wraps from a uh, ship's banner. Bring the right back up some. Then the next one is to stitch an orange. I don't have anything that has that much orange in it. So, I will be doing 300 penalty stitches, and I will be putting it in on Strawberry Fields Forever. Yay! Um, this is on Winterbrook from Under the Sea Fabrics. So here's where I'm at. So I'm hoping that that means I will finish out the house and go from there. Right, then the next, oh, is stitch on something with a shirt in it. So I'm sort of loosely interpreting shirt as blouse, and I'm going to work on fairy tale favorites on Sleeping Beauty, um, because all of these ladies are sort of wearing blouses. And Dorothy does technically have a shirt on, so. Um, but Sleeping Beauty's in the middle. Or is the, the next one. So I'll be stitching on that. Um, looking forward to that. And then, last but not least, stitch on something that makes your day brighter. So I'm going to work on quilts, which is my long dog sampler. We're going to aim for probably a page finish, but I just love the colors in this thing so much. Um, it's just so pretty. There it is. And if I don't get a page finish on it this time, then the next time I work on it, I will. There we go. That is this week for me. Um, yeah. So anyhow, that is all for me for the time being. Um, I will see you all next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And I hope everyone has a great week.